folks, Kathy Williams DeVries here bringing you um, the second video in my series on the Nielsen Concerto. Um, why I would like to qualify that um, I've never actually gotten this up to public performance, but I have studied it uh, both at an undergraduate and postgraduate level here and uh, in the UK. So, First page, yeah, you know, it's uh, it's reasonably difficult, but unfortunately it's all downhill from there in terms of difficulty. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to... So what I'm going to do is uh, take you through how I would prepare such a piece. Um, and I won't get it up to tempo. If you want something up to tempo, then uh, by all means check out Martin Frost's recording, I'm sure he has a recording of Sabina Meyer um, <clears throat> for that. What I will do is give you the tools to be able to learn this on your own um, away from your teacher um, and I've recently had a lesson on this piece myself. So we've done the first page, uh, now um, halfway between three and four we come into the really really nasty demi semi quaver section um, on the second page um, and I was having quite a discussion with my teacher about how to go from the C sharp to the G and back down again although I think the issue isn't going up to the G it's coming down from it I personally prefer to lift the ring finger off You could simply put down the C sharp key. But uh, yeah, personally, I prefer to lift the ring finger up. So, what you do when you're confronted with such a passage is actually take it at half speed. So, how you approach it. Um, it is hard getting down from that G. Uh, my teacher said place more emphasis on the C sharp for the G and there won't be so much of an issue. The issue is not the G, it's the C sharp on both sides of the G. Yeah, I really prefer to lift the ring finger up. And it's going so fast that if it's slightly sharp, I don't think you can notice. And there's nothing actually playing there apart from you and a snare drum. Now this next bit um, after the first bar and a half is also quite difficult. I always have trouble going from the G to the B flat for some reason. But uh, unfortunately I've sort of learnt bad habits as an undergraduate. What I should have done is what I'm doing now, which is taking it at half speed. See, I can't quite get it cleanly. So this is how, um, and I'll take you through what I would do in order to practice this. So I'll take it at half speed. a break between the Fort Sando G natural. It's very, very challenging. But that's how I would go about it. And then in the second line, Uh, personally, I use the right hand D flat and the left hand C, but that's just me. I sort of like to keep it in the right hand. So, if we do that whole passage at this speed. Now, 
Now here I would use the long F sharp. Because you've, you've got a fourth sando on it, so you want it to come out. Um, I'm going to let you do the interim sort of speeds. Go, you know, sort of only increase it by increments of two beats um, each time. But we're taking it up to 80. So make sure that going from the B flat, F sharp, E, C, E flat is very strong. Have trouble with that a few times. I still, even now. So I'll take that, take it at this speed. Let's increase it to 88 and you'll see how by gradually increasing the speed um, you'll get the passage a lot quicker than if you try and read it at speed and keep falling in a heap. So, I find um, the last beat of that second bar quite intensive for the right hand. Um, and that's my little challenge. So I'll take it up to 96. at this speed then I'll, I'll move it up to 104 and I'll leave it there because I think that's enough for one lesson. So it's coming along really nicely. This will be my final speed at 108 and it's quite a deal faster than when we started. Yeah, it's starting to fall apart a little bit. I'm sort of aggressively doing it too quickly. And I'll leave it there because um, it's uh, it starts to mellow out a little bit. It's still a little bit aggressive. still uh, forte and even though it's chilling out a little bit um, use that use the long B flat there's no reason why you shouldn't so um, so we're probably um, I would take it to about 50. So, um, let's see what happens when I take it from 3.
we threw that little bit and as you see it really cleaned up quite nicely. Now this little bit between five and six is very um, um it's a little bit sort of improvisational, it's very calm, it's very smooth. Personally I would half I would I use the trill keys for the D sharp. Um, although I mean if you've got a nice C to D sharp happening both ways. So let's go from four. It's very sensual. Um, and you, yeah, you want a really, really nice legato happening. Uh, be aware in the second last bar of the fourth line to uh, use the fork fingering for that um, G flat. Now, see what I'll do? I'll speed up a little bit. Let's take it at 60. Nielsen wanted them to really stick out. It's almost like you're playing a second tune with yourself. So you've got this and then so you play a 
tune with yourself. So, and then we're back to this grazioso sort of innocent sinewy um, until we've got that nasty G, R, C flat going to B flat. So let's take it from 6. smooth and sinuously. sensual bit. I had quite a discussion with my teacher yesterday over this C flat to B flat and I think the music calls for you to actually um, play the regular fingerings because it doesn't sound as good because be aware that you can leave the right hand down and then now I've got little notes written here from when I studied it in London and uh, the tritone B flat to F sharp uh, can be also is, uh, is labeled satanically you can be quite rough with it uh, I would use the long B flat Now we've got this sinewy one again. I would try not to breathe. There. And then in the first line of page three, we're gradually um, getting slower into the cadenza. Although save some room, uh, save some room for the pianissimo of the cadenza. Let me take it from five. Um, right through to the cadenza and then that'll be enough for today.
quite a comprehensive guide um, into the second page of the Nielsen Concerto leading up to the Gedanza. Um, so the next lecture we'll be looking at the Gedanza alone. It's, uh, so I'll take you through my personal struggles with it, um, bits where I think you can fake notes, um, how to practice it, how to approach it, um, and I'm sure that you'll find it most informative. So, thank you for listening. Please join me for the Glenza. Bye for now.